welcome to Behind the Scenes where I sew with you one Friday a month. So we are finishing up Bountiful and this is release five. This is a completely free pattern series you can find at Fat Quarter Shop. It was designed by Corey Yoder and it is for our Make-A-Wish charity for 2023. You can donate to our Make-A-Wish. Um, we will be or auctioning off this quilt that I've made on camera later in the year. Um, we're going to try to raffle it instead of auction it so more people have access. We're just trying to work with Make-A-Wish to get the kinks um, the kinks worked out. So we're going to see if we can do that. I can't promise, but we're in the process of trying to see if we can do that. Today, what I wanted to do was just talk about um, putting your quilt all together into one quilt and maybe some tips on, I think it just some tips on getting everything to kind of fit together and I think this was probably the hardest thing to do when I first started quilting because when you first start quilting your blocks don't come out the right size you know and so it's harder to get everything to matchy match um, so I'm just gonna give you tips as we go and then I would love if you guys would put tips in um, so that maybe we can learn from each other and of course you can donate to make a wish if you would like we're at fifty seven thousand four hundred and seven dollars as of this morning so hopefully maybe we can get to sixty thousand today so my first tip is when you are laying out a quilt block um, we are using the Cheryl Ann's design wall that's 72 inches by 72 inches and it is a big it does take up a lot of space but it is um, very it's very um, I would say portable so you could like move it from room to room easily it's lightweight um, and we have them in stock now I personally don't use a design wall because I don't have room in my sewing room now I would love to and I used to have one a long time ago so hopefully one day I'll have a um, room for one but that's what we're using today and so basically my first tip would be lay out your blocks and basically all I've done is taken my quilt pattern and I've laid it out I even have my borders on there which you don't have to do now before the video started one thing we did do ahead of time is these two blocks we sewed those together and the bottom left we sewed those two together just to save time and um, you can mass produce this or you can just do section by section. So I'm going to show you how to do section by section. It kind of depends um, how big the quilt is or how much time I have. But this one, I have it all laid out the way I want it. I'm matching the pattern and um, again, free pattern. So I'm just going to kind of give you some tips as we go. So I'm going to sew this to this, press, come back, and then add this and then put it back on the design wall. Then I'll do the second row put on the design row, third row, put on the design world, design board. So I'm just going to put these right sides together straight off the board, just like that, because if I do that, I know that they're in the right spot because they came right off the design board. Now what I use at home is I use my floor. And so it does take more time. Okay, so when you're joining something together, I always pin the left and the right first. What I prefer to do is, there are two sides here. This one has more seams, and this one has less seams. So you can see that. So I always prefer to put the one with less seams on the top. And so once I pin these two, I'm gonna pull. And then I kind of do this with my fingers and pin. I'm going to pin a lot because when I go to the sewing machine, I want to be able to sew fast and I don't want to have to sit and shift and pull and all that stuff. So just put a lot of pins. I can tell you I have a little secret coming with pins and it's really exciting for me. So I think it'll be exciting for you. Um, I can't give you any more detail, but I think it's something you guys will love. I know I will love it. Um, so then what I'm going to do is start sewing. Now, I'm not gonna backstitch at this point, but you can if you would like, because you're starting to assemble the quilt. But I'm not going to. I'm just gonna sew across, and like I said, I'm gonna keep this side up, just because that's easier for me. And when you're assembling a quilt, having a bed like this glass thing is really helpful so that you're so that you're, it's not falling off 
or down since the bed of the machine ends over here. And what I try to do, now this is a lot of fabric. So the biggest thing that I do when I'm working on a quilt and I'm doing the finishing, I'm gonna put a lot of pressure on the left side of my body and I'm gonna push it through so I can go fast. So you'll just see how I'm pushing. So from here, I'll go to my iron. And of course, even though I've hit it a couple of times, it uh, needs to heat up. Now, one thing I do do when I get to this point in a quilt, I'll use this little uh, piece of scrap fabric for a while. But once I get to bigger pieces, it will get in my way. So at some point, I will remove that and just hope I don't get my sewing machine dirty. I mean, my ironing table dirty. Set your seam, press to the white. And here you just wanna be careful. If you start dragging your iron, you're gonna drag that seam. Okay, so then what I do Walk back to my design board, lift this on top, put it together. Now, I've got a lot of seams here and not here, but what I'm going to do before I turn it over, I'm just going to pin the edges. My favorite white fabric is 20708-36. And it's out of stock, but I order it in big chunks, so I'm hoping that comes soon. Well, I'm going to go ahead and just have it this way. I'll just pin it this way. And that design wall is called Cheryl Ann's Design Wall. The size we have up is 72 inches square. It comes in three different sizes. We use this one just because it fit well with um, this quilt. I was kind of hoping, you know, eventually I could have one that I could fold up, but then I'm kind of, kind of lazy. I might not really fold it. Okay, so here you can either sew from the top or I'm going to sew from here. I think it's just easier. Now, the one thing I'm going to find is I bet when I do that, I'm going to have seams that I have to move around, but I can get it to go through the machine easier this way. And just use the weight of the left side of your body to pull it through. Now it's starting to get heavy. So if you let that drag down over here to the left of my body, it's going to be weighted. So pull that up and it moves the weight onto the bed of the machine. Okay, so when I look on the back, none of my seams moved, so that's great. Oh, I forgot that there, oops. Set my seam, press to the white, 
There is going to be a new tutorial on the vintage Starburst paper. It's awesome. So it's coming out next Thursday. Okay, I'm going to try to not hit the microphone with this quilt. So here, I don't want to have a duck pleat. So I just want to make sure that's nice and flat. And then I'm going to put this back on. Now, the way that we have this laid out is it's tilted. A little bit and so when you tilt it it's more likely to stay in place if it's flat it's more likely to come off but this is like a flannel so you could put pins in it easily if you wanted it to stay but I think we'll be fine so then I'll start here and here now if you're having issues where maybe one block is bigger than the other block. The best thing to do is find the center of each, pin those, and pin the sides. But these are looking like they're lining up good. But definitely if you have tips right now, it'd be great to put them in. And I just kind of peeked to see, like right here, that technically should line up, but I mean, I think it's, it's white, it's fine. It'll probably line up on its own. I am pickier when I put, I will say I am a lot pickier when I put my blocks together. When I put my rows together, I kind of just do whatever. Okay. So just looking at this, I'm going to sew with this on top. Okay, right there, I could tell my seam had flipped. So right here, that, that seam right there is flipped. And right there and I just don't want that to be bumpy on the other side so I'll just unpick a couple of stitches get it nice and flat and restitch over that and another tip is when I'm stitching or sewing The final quilt together I use that same seam allowance so whatever you seam allowance you use in your blocks you use that on your quilt now what I was mentioning before when I was pinning is right here I needed that to line up and that to line up but I didn't pin it because I just figured it'll either line up or it doesn't um, and then I could just pull the piece from the wall or, so I don't make a mistake, I do this. I do this. And I'm less likely to make a mistake. Okay, we have a question from Anja Sings. Why does my machine make my seams push out from under the presser foot? I can't sew a straight line. Okay, so sometimes when you're sewing with quilts, there are different plates you can put on your machine, which is that silver plate. And sometimes if you have a plate that has too many openings in it, it doesn't work as great for sewing. So it just make sure you have a flat plate. I don't know what they're called, um, but a, it doesn't have a lot of holes in it. Your tension might also be a little off. 
So right here you can see, see there's a little bump. Just kind of, it'll just even itself out. You just kind of have to pull. Oh, thank you to the Pathola for the super chat. She always sends me super chats. She says, thanks for sharing so much with all of us. Thank you. And tell me if you have a tip. And like I said, when you're looking at it, you know, you can see right here, there's a little thing. When you're sewing, if you pull like that, it all goes nice and flat. Single whole plate, correct. Stitch, stitch whole plate. Yes, that is correct. You asked for suggestions for more foundation papers. I would love to have a 60 degree triangle. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll see what we can do. How can we get the blocks from last year's Moda Christmas quilt with the primitive gatherings alphabet? So I did make sure the seam I just ironed went right here so that I wouldn't have to think about, did that go here or here? I am gonna double check before I do the final one, but then I'm gonna do these two. Okay, for the Christmas quilt last year, I would go to the Moda Fabrics blog. Off the top of my head, I don't remember. I think that it is a paid pattern by Lisa Bonjean and a free layout on Moda's blog. Um, okay, so here I have these two pinned and I'm gonna pull. That's kind of how I find the center. Just pull and you just move your fingers in, pin in the center and then pin throughout. This is a great suggestion from Grammy3. I use my bed to lay out blocks and go back and forth and it makes me get up and move. That's a great idea. One thing I have done is put them in my living room, which is pretty far away, and then have one of my sons go back and forth and get them because sometimes I can be lazy. My kids say I'm inactive. I'm like, yeah, that'd be correct. Because I don't, I'm just not a sporty person. Like I don't run. I don't get in the pool. That's one thing y'all probably don't know about me. I do not get, my foot won't even go in a pool. I am like deathly scared of water. I'll get on a boat, but I'm not, I'm not getting in. Okay, my tip, watch Kimberly and she will teach you lots of stuff. Thank you. So again, when you're looking at this, you know, it's not completely flat. You can tell that this front has a little bit more bumps than the back. So, um, just put it in your machine and just pull as you go. You can just kind of peek and make sure your seams stay flat. and see how many of you use a design board how many of you don't just a yes or no I don't but I will say having this here really makes it go smoother I just don't have room for one but I would love to have one so here again I'm just gonna make sure nice and flat
And then we're gonna go back here and magically that block, it crawled back on the wall and got on the wall somehow. I don't know. It learned how to crawl. Okay, so sometimes you have to just put it in the air to flatten it. Okay, if you place the larger piece on the bottom, the feed dogs will ease the large piecing instead of pulling. Yes, and that is one thing I actually learned from Pat Sloan. I just find that when I do that, I get puckers for some reason. So that's what you're, that is a good point because that's what most people do. I just find that it doesn't work for me, but you can do either. But yes, technically, that is correct. Now here, I see how there's a little bit over. I really need to pull, I'm gonna pull this to the left so that it gets um, just kind of out of the way. Would love a cat's cradle foundation paper. That's a great idea. I think that's actually on our list. Does my cat bed count a design wall? Hey, you can count whatever you want as a design wall. I use the floor, so. I usually though, you know, one thing is, Teresa does a lot of the putting of the quilts together for me, and she does use a design wall in her area. So technically I can say I cheat and do. You, you know what will be funny today? I take all my blocks home from, I take all my blocks home to sew and we're going to take a photo when we put it all in my car so you can see how much i take home and then bring back and why teresa pieces them together because it would just be a whole nother trip okay so so um sew the seam Okay, so there I went a little bit too short because of the weight, so I'm going to redo that. Design wall, 45% say yes, 42% say no, and 11% say sometimes. I don't know why the iron's doing that, just ignore it. Okay, right here I could feel, right there there's a little bump, I'm gonna fix that. Uh, thank you to Holly Martin. Kimberly, every time I watch you sew, I learn something new. Thank you for sharing your knowledge. Thank you for watching. Okay, so here, I'm just gonna pull a couple of stitches out. Um, and then another thing, why don't we do a poll of do you starch or do you not starch? Oh, and then thank you to Valeria Bauer for the super sticker. She says I'm amazing. I would tell my kids that y'all said that. Okay. So now when I go back over that, I'll go from this side just to make sure that stays flat. Oh, and right here, that's also not pressed flat. So I'll fix that. I'll fix the whole thing all at once. I have to unrip the stitches real quick. It's really, that's probably the hardest thing to do on camera is unrip the stitches because at home, I usually put my face right in front of the stitch to see it. Okay. How's Piggy this week? Oh, he's good. He's so cute. I don't know if I took any pictures of him this week. Maybe I did. I can look at my phone. Oh, oops. 
Sorry, guys, I put the quilt on the microphone. Sorry, I hope I didn't mess it up. Okay. Do I have the background fabric? Do you get the background fabric with the Jolly Bar pattern? No, you just get the prints from the collection. You get 42 rectangles. 40 or 42, I can't remember off the top of my head. Now, my tip here, double, triple check before you start going. So I'm just gonna kinda look, excuse me, to make sure when I laid it back, I laid it back correctly and that nothing is upside down. Of course, on a quilt like this, um, you know, we've got our baskets offset, so I'm just double checking. And then what I'm gonna do is, I think it would be easier to put this on top of this and then add the top. So I'm gonna put that on top of there. And I am gonna talk about how to add borders and that will give you tips if you're piecing something that has sashing and um, not blocky blocks, 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 blocks over and over. So thank you to Jamie Matthews for the super chat. So here what I'm gonna do, is pin a little bit on the left or the right whatever side and then I'm gonna go all the way to the other side and pin oh 70% starch I think I've got all of you guys I'm um, starching I need to have my own starch okay let's see how much we've raised have we raised any money today Ooh. $10. Okay, so here what I'm going to do Okay, so I Hold on a second. I pressed this the wrong way. So I wasn't paying attention and I pressed this in and that's pressed in. So I don't want to undo my pins I already did. So that's good. I already have my pins in. I'm gonna fix it on the iron. Now this is where this, this fabric goes away. Okay, so here, I'm gonna fix it here. I'm just gonna go the other way and then I'll, I'll know I need to do an all over press again to make sure I don't have duck pleats on the other side after I do that. I just don't wanna have to undo what I just did. So I just wasn't paying attention. Go back. Okay, let's see. Okay, now they now they nest. And I'm gonna put a pin in that intersection and then just pin throughout. And I'm gonna pin a lot. I feel like I make less mistakes when I pin. Sidebar. I want to know if Kimberly listens to Texas Monthly True Crime Podcast, Tom Brown's Body last year and now Stephenville. Just curious. I'm a big fan. I have not listened to that one, but um, Jordan can email me the name of that and I'll look it up. Uh, can customer service help me color match an older bunny hoe line to either a Bella Solid or another designer's fabric? I'm desperate for similar color yardage to a completed UFO. Sure. I, I mean, we might not have that fabric still in stock, but we can try to help. Okay. So now this is empty because I had put all my pins on the other one. So we're going to switch out. So I'll put that one back and then move. That's why I have two. I just started stitching. Oh, this is lifting and stitching. I just started stitching though after finishing a quilt. I feel like I need to wash it immediately. Does leaving fabric starch have any adverse effects over a long period of time before wash? Uh, not that I know of. I've been starching for the entire time I've been quilting. So I think it's fine. I've never had an issue. 
Um, the only time, the only thing that I would do is when, if I was doing a, like when I do baby quilts, um, before I gift it, I would wash that and I would just wash it and then um, I wouldn't put it in the dryer because I don't like that wrinkly effect, just so that there's no starch on the baby. When blocks were pieced, they were pressed open. Now she's pressing to one side, is that right? Yes, okay, so that is what I'm doing. So when I did the blocks, and this is mostly what I do, love to press open. I'm just like addicted to it. And then when I put it in a quilt, I definitely will press to one side because there's just too many seams right there. Okay, Nora has a fat eighth bundle of Stacy Itsu Stomp Stomp Roar Roar Dinos. I need to maybe make a baby boy quilt. Anyone have pattern suggestions? So I would search on Fat Quarter Shop Little P. Those are cute, um, low price, small baby quilt patterns. And that is actually named after my son Peyton. We, we used to call him Little P. Now he's Big P because he's taller than me. He's, Kevin thinks he's going to be taller than Kevin because he's almost taller than Kevin. It's insane. He's 13. And he's like, I don't know, 5'12 or something. Okay, now I'm going to pin this. I'm sorry, I'm going to sew this. And I'm going to try. My goal at this point is more about like keeping this line straight while managing the weight at the same time. Sometimes if it gets too heavy, everything starts to go wonky. So I won't be able to sew as fast. And I'm just kind of adjusting as I go, if I feel like I need to. And this is when my body starts hurting because I'm so inactive. I'm like, oh, my shoulder's hurting. Okay, so here it's kind of a little bit off. I just need to pull a little bit. And your goal here is just to try to keep everything lined up and make sure one, your top or your bottom doesn't shift to the side at all. Okay, I have a couple of seams that flipped, so I'm gonna just put it on the bed of my machine and unstitch them, stitch back over them. Now, this could have been avoided if I had this on top, but I just find this works better for me. And when I get into really big quilts, sometimes I won't fix these because it just gets to be too big but this quilt is manageable.
Okay. So then here, I'm just gonna make sure I kind of keep it all separate and I don't accidentally iron on top of each other. And then I'll show you how I re-iron that section I had to refix or adjust. If I wanna use triangle paper for half square triangles in a quilt, would I need to add extra fabric? No, actually you wouldn't because you use the same amount of fabric. I'm always curious if you talk out loud while you're sewing at home thinking you are taping. Oh no, uh-uh. No, at home I watch true crime. I'm gonna actually, can we move these? Sorry, I'm gonna move those blocks so I don't drop them on the floor. Okay, so now I'm gonna press to one side. Now when I get these big pieces like this, I finger press. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I sometimes talk to myself, but I definitely don't talk. I usually just watch TV and there's not much on lately though. I have one kid that talks to himself though. It drives me crazy, drives me crazy. And I'm like, okay, you're at the age now where we got to stop. People are going to make fun of you. I was like, I don't care. So I just want to make sure nice and flat all the way across. And I'm gonna, I just moved everything off my ironing board. Okay, this right here, because I changed the direction of it, I'm gonna make that flat on the front. So now it's perfect. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back to the design board. Okay, that's not gonna work. I'm gonna have to do this, it's too too much. Okay, I'm gonna do that. Okay, there. And then this on top. And just compare it to your pattern real quick. Looks correct, and pull it back. And then pin. Will you share what true crime you are currently enjoying? Um, I haven't found anything lately that I like, actually, and people complain when I talk about it, but honestly, right now, I have nothing. Um, and, yeah, I have nothing. I, I would love to have something. I did get Magellan TV, which has a lot of autobiographies and biographies, and um, it does have true crime, but it has a lot of, like, nature... Um, you know, reality, like nature programs. And so I've kind of, I've kind of liked that. It just has, some of them are recorded in other countries. And so if it had, if it has the dubbing where they put the words on it, I can't watch it. Cause I'll be, I can't sew and read at the same time. So that's the only thing. Can I use a walking foot for long seams from Veronica White? Yes, absolutely. But I will tell you the reason I don't. Do we have a, do we have one in here? We have one behind. Okay, hold on. I will show you, if we can get it out, I'll show you why I don't. But yes, you can, and I'll show you the way that, if you were gonna do it, how you could kind of get around it. Oh, awesome. Okay. So if I was sewing, Okay, so when you're sewing with a long arm right here, or sorry, when you're sewing with a walk, I need to take a drink of tea in a second because I'm jumbling all my words. Okay, when you're sewing with this, you put this on here. There's not a quarter inch seam like there is on my machine. So if I was gonna do this, I would literally, sorry. If I was going to use that, I would literally draw your quarter inch seam so that when you're sewing, you stay on that seam. But um, that's the only way I would use a walking foot. Sorry. Okay. Let's see. Okay. When I talk to myself, I know I can have an intelligent conversation. Well, I don't know if I can say the same for myself. 
when oh let's see kimberly how many hours a day do you a, how many hours a day or week do you spend in your sewing studio probably 20. i work about 100 hours a week and I, i'm not kidding because um i pretty much work all the time if i'm sitting watching sports i sit i'm sitting there with stuff in my lap like when i go out of town next week i'm taking emma to old miss again for the second time and I already have planned what I'm going to take, what I'm going to finish. What are the patchwork pins I'm using? These are little house pins. Okay. So here, one thing I'm going to do that's different. Okay. Let me see if I can show you here. Okay. So I'm going to keep this on top because of the way it's laying. I don't want to have to flip it over and sew on that side because of the weight. So now I am going to do it the way you're supposed to, just because of the weight. And sometimes if you kind of do a little rolly thing over here on the left, you can control the weight. So doing this will give you somewhere to grab and then um, go across here. And you'll have to definitely try that where you roll it because I think you will like that. So see, I can put my hand over here and just kind of push it. And what I meant about the walking foot is right here, there's a little guide that stays and gives me that quarter inch seam. Okay, right there, I kind of went a little bit in. So I'm gonna fix, start back over and fix that. I had a dream about you and Lori Holt last night. We went to a starch convention. I woke up like, what? Oh, that's funny, stitching with Sister Lee's. Uh, Lori doesn't starch. She probably wouldn't go with me to that. Okay, so now I've got all that, but I need this to also be the seam set, so I'm just gonna do this. Now, somebody in there asked if I built my ironing board. No, it is a big board, but we are starting to sell more ironing boards on our site. So you will start seeing more and more ironing boards because we've gotten a lot of requests for them. Okay, so I'm just kind of moving. Now here I want to press to this white. So I just have to kind of get everything out of the way and then I need to finger press this to the inside. How was your progress on Happy Go Lucky? Okay, so since I showed you last week, I haven't sewn anything. So I'm gonna, my goal is to finish all of the churn dashes today or tomorrow. So um, I'm gonna kind of look on the back. See, I could tell on the back, see how that's not flat. I can just tell. Just gonna. 
what length of stitch? 1.5. And that's really short. Most people use more. Most people do 2.0. I use 1.5. But whatever stitch length you use in your blocks, that's what you should use over here. And I will say I love this big board because um, I can get, you know, it works great for these big quilts. Okay. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is talk about borders and I'm going to add one border. There's, there's four. So two side, two top. I'm just going to do one side because it's all the same. So, um, the one thing that I would say is when I would make quilts, very, this was, you know, before I had the It's So Emma patterns, it would never say your quilt size, your quilt center size. And that drove me crazy because when I add my borders, I want to know the exact size. I don't like when patterns just say, add a side border, add a top and bottom, and they don't give you the, measure, the measurements. To me, that is imperative. So if I don't have a pattern, that has quilt center size and this, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna figure out this math because I always go with this math instead of measuring the quilt. That for some people is a big no-no, but that's just the way that I work. So 60 and a half by 60 and a half. So I cut my borders length of fat. Oh, they're on the board. Okay, I, but I cut them length of fabric instead of piecing them together. And when I cut the two and a half inch borders, I, um, I just cut them 73, about 73 inches. They're about 10 inches bigger than the, the bigger cut. That's just what I do. So when I get a kit, no matter what kit it is, I will cut anything that needs to be pieced together in long pieces, length of fabric. Because I feel like length of fabric will, um, stabilize your quilt because there's no stretch. It is harder for beginners to do. So I would not start doing length of fabric until you, you know, really get the inside of your quilt the correct size or it won't work. But right here, my side border, I need to have 60 and a half by two and a half. So, and my side, I'm gonna put this right here, just kind of out of the way. So 60 and a half divided by two is 30 and a quarter. Okay, so the only time I use my mat ever is for measuring borders. So I'm gonna just fold this right sides together because I don't have a mat that goes all the way to 60 and a half. So 60 and a half divided by two is 30 and a quarter. So I'm gonna put this at about 30 and a quarter on my mat. I'm gonna put a pin here I'm gonna make sure this stays right on that line. Pin at the ends. And then I'm gonna check it. And then when I open this up, this should be one end the other end and the center. So what I'm gonna do, move this to the side, and you would use this technique on any border, whether it's inner, outer, anything like that. Now I'm adding to the side of my quilt. So this is one of the sides. It doesn't matter if you do the left or the right first. When I'm at home, I usually do them both at the same time. Okay, so I'm gonna take this And I'm going to find the center. And I'm going to put a pin right in that center. Thank you to Anna Banana. Uh, I am a true crime documentary 
while sewing lover, former 20 year competitive dance mom, former CPA who has twin boys. I love Fat Quarter Shop and Kimberly, so let them complain all they want. Okay, that's hilarious because I love true crime. I was a competitive dance mom. Now I'm just a drill team mom. I'm a CPA and I have twin boys. So that's pretty interesting. Okay, so here my biggest thing is to make sure I have right sides together. So I'm gonna pin the center. And honestly, when you get to doing the borders, you know, you, you have to do a lot of finagling. So I'm gonna pin each side. Am I showing how to cut and add batting and backing? Um, definitely not batting. Um, we do have a video on backing next month. But the, um, the quilting, we have videos on our channel of that. Okay, so here. Pin the center, pin to the edge. Now, what I'm gonna do is pull. And just hopefully, there's I don't have to pull too much or finagle too much, but if I do, you just kind of move it in. I use a quarter inch, a quarter inch foot that I got at Primitive Gatherings website. I'm going to switch. Thank you. And then I think we can move that. Okay. So I'm just kind of, I kind of just ease it in. But the easy, the more you pin, the easier it is when you're at the sewing machine. And then I'm going to go to the other side and do the same thing. And I'm trying to make it where you guys can see. Okay. The aqua blue blouse looks great on you, Kimberly. I love it. It looks like a Talbot's. Yes, it is a Talbot's. And you know, the other day, I broke my iPhone. That's lovely. You don't, you definitely don't want to do that. I had my, I was without my phone for like three hours. Broke my phone. I've never broken a phone before. How do you get it fixed? Well, you had to wait like three hours. So I was trying to kill time. I was walking around the mall. They closed the Talbot's. I was like, oh, this is going to be a problem. So I guess I'm going to have to shop online now. Um... Can starch and iron dry, is that a good method or no? I saw someone use a canned starch and air dry, but I didn't understand why. Yes, that's what I do. Um, on my channel, there are several videos on starching. I, lick, I, I starch and I let it dry. Will a cone of thread fit on a brother machine? You can adapt a cone to any machine by buying a thread holder, and you put that thread holder behind your machine, and it's like a big cone thing you put it on and then you just pull it up and loop it through like normal okay now i'm gonna sew these now one thing i'm gonna do different okay so here you see i have all this extra that's how i always do it. Ooh, 58,289. yay we raised four thousand dollars thank you oh my gosh yay we might get to sixty thousand. okay so what i'm gonna do different here is I'm gonna start stitching way out here. I'm gonna stitch over about half inch in, go backwards, and then keep going. I'm gonna do that all the way down. When I get down here, I'm gonna back stitch about half an inch and then go back over. Because when I press this out, I wanna be able to trim this where it's perfectly straight and just adding that extra uh, backstitch is gonna give you stability. And most people don't backstitch on borders, but I always do, even if it's a baby quilt. Now here, there's a lot of bulk, so let's figure out what to do. What I like to do, I'm try to get this where you can see it. I need to get the bulk out of the way. And if you just go to the sewing machine with the big old quilt, it's just gonna hang over. Okay, so I'm going to fold that where I folded it in half, but left enough right here. I'm going to just put it smaller sections. When you go to the machine, you hold this and then you're, you have weight, but it's not all the way out here where you can't get it.
And then I'm just kind of, you got to kind of pull that back so that it's not falling off the table. And then when you bring it to iron, you can leave it rolled up. But what I'm going to do is set the seam all the way across. And then I'm going to finger press that. And press across, just making sure you don't press over here. What I'm gathering is that you measure the quilt and make your borders that measurement. Yes. Whatever the quilt, si the quilt center size is, that's your first size you want to add. And then... But I, the difference, well, let me answer that in a second. So when you're adding your borders, I go with what the finished size of the quilt should be. I do not measure the quilt and go from that. I always go from the size it's supposed to be. And any of our patterns always tell you the size you need so you don't have to worry. I change my needle, let's see, probably every time I sew. Lately I've been doing it more. So I'm just gonna cut that. And when I'm cutting this, put the line on your ruler with the line on that border seam and cut. And then you're gonna have 45 degree, 90 degree, I don't know my degrees. 90 degree angle, always. If you put the exact size of, if you cut your border the exact size and put it on without this extra part, you're definitely not gonna have a 90 degree. Okay, so then basically I would take this I'm just keeping the bulk out of the way from here measure your center do the same exact thing and add it press do everything the same and then add your top and bottom so let me know if you have any more questions on that um, it's all the same so I don't want to keep sewing Plus, it's really hard to do on camera. It's hot. Okay. And this will be auctioned off for Make-A-Wish. Okay. So I have two, a couple of follow-ups from last week. So anytime y'all ask anything and I don't know the answer or I make a mistake, I try to come back and correct myself. I'm going to take a drink of tea just real quick. Okay, last week I said that the pink had the tapered edge. 
I was wrong. The company that makes these rulers is called CM Designs. The plus are the ones with the tapered edge. So I was wrong. So you can see on the left, this one is just at a quarter and it's a thick edge. This right here, you can see, this one is the plus. So that's why I prefer to use the plus. And of course I use the pink, but I just thought it was all the pink. So I was wrong, so thank you for correcting me. Now, I will show you on paper. Do we have a paper pad somewhere I can grab? I'll just grab a piece of paper and show you the difference. And this is personal preference, so again, thicker, thinner. Thank you. Okay. So when I work with foundation paper, I like to crease the seams. So I'm going to do this one with the plus, and you can see how nice and flat that is because it's a skinny edge. If you try to do the same thing with this fat edge, which is not the plus, you're not going to get that. You're going to get, like, it's just not, it just does not, it's a lot more work. It just, and see, I didn't even come, if you look, see, I didn't come out on the lines. I'm off because it doesn't create, so that's why I use the plus. So thank you for correcting me. Um, Melanie Clark emailed me. So it is, um, if you want to use the one I like, use the plus. It comes in pink and yellow. Another follow-up question from last week is we had a question if we can make a fat quarter bundle of the fabrics that were in the 2024 door banner quilt for Lori's Autumn Leaves banner. So we looked, and it's basically the B plaids collection, so you can just get a charm pack or a fat quarter bundle of B plaids. There's nothing, it's not, I thought it might be groups mixed. It's not, it's just B plaids. So I'm not going to make a bundle because we already have it. And um, also, just so you know, this pattern will not be available separately, only in the club. Okay. Can you zoom in a little bit? Okay, I'm going to give you a little tease. Next week is going to be Sew With Me. And... Um, I am going to do something fun. It will be something that you can use from your stash or if you're in a fat quarter club or you have a fat quarter bundle, it's something you can do and it's just a fun sew with me. And it is going to be pre-recorded because I am taking Emma to Ole Miss next week and then the week after will also, well, the week after will be canceled, right? Yeah. The week after will be canceled, so you guys won't see me in a while. The week after will be canceled because I will be at the University of Tennessee with Emma. Um, someone's asking about my pressing station. Okay, we have something planned for the fall where we have a lot of new ironing stations. So what we're going to do is we're going to do an all-encompassing video where we um, show different ironing boards, different irons, pros, cons, all that. But that's in the fall. Okay, I'm going to hold this quilt up. I'm going to just do this way. So this is the mezzanine quilt kit. It features the Cascade collection by Three Sisters. It's a Jolly Bar pattern. And one thing that's very different about this Jolly Bar pattern is Angel designed it to use three Jolly Bars. So it's a bigger quilt, it's 56 by 64. So you can get the Jolly Bar and the pattern comes with it or you can buy the quilt kit and you get three Jolly Bars plus the binding. And then this is what Angel um, picked for the backing. So Angel designed it, Adela from our kitting department uh, sewed it, and Sarah Campbell quilted it. The I'm so excited to tell you next Tuesday, make sure you um, or subscribe to our YouTube channel. Our Evergreen free mystery program is starting next week. So um, 
this starts on Tuesday will be your first video. It is layer cake friendly. You can download the fabric requirements on Fat Quarter Shop's website or the Jolly Jabber blog, but next Tuesday will be the first pattern. And that first pattern, we're gonna go from the bottom to the top. You can maybe guess what this is. But this year we are featuring the Favorite Things collection. So look forward to that on Tuesday, completely free pattern. Okay, now I'm going to show you new things. When I went to the H&H &H show, I um, got to see a lot of different vendors, maybe Notion vendors, quilting vendors. Well, I didn't realize that Tilda had solid bundles. So I ordered these for the store. So this, um, this is Tilda Solids Cool Colors 20 Fat Quarters. This is Tilda Solids Warm Colors 25 Fat Quarters. This is Tilda Solids 50 Fat Eighths. So these are new. These came in. Now I also ordered, they had some other basic bundles that were like stripes, dots, different things, and I didn't know they had them. So these are now in stock. We hope to just keep them at all times. Now, just so you know, Tilda fabric is much more expensive. It has a minimum, it has a map policy. A map policy is called minimum advertised price. So if you think it's expensive, we're right at that minimum advertised price. We cannot sell the fabrics lower or they will not sell to us. So it is expensive, but um, I just want to explain that. But I'm very excited to have these because I didn't know. I mean, maybe I should have known, but I didn't know that um, we don't have a sales rep for them. So I didn't know. So when I saw them, I was like, what are those? Now, also speaking of color, that's Tilda. We got this in this week. This is called Pop Arazzi. P-O-P-A-R-A-Z-Z-I. I'm going to take this apart because these are going to be my, my fabrics anyway. This is my bundle, so I can just take it apart. Um, Riley Blake is going to be hosting a sew along featuring this with another collection. More details to come later, but um, this is that's why this is gonna be my bundle because I'm gonna be sewing along with it. Now, um, this is a new collection. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head how many pieces are in it, but it's going to be a basic. So I'm gonna just show you the colors. And I'm not sure if you use all of them in that sew along, I actually have no idea. I know it calls for a fat quarter bundle, but I don't have the pattern, so I can't give you more. And then I'm gonna open up the fabrics and kind of show you the print on it so you can see, but this is gonna be a basic. We're gonna keep it as a basic at Fat Quarter Shop as long as they keep it, so. That would be awesome. 40. Okay, Denise thinks it's 40 pieces. Okay, I'm gonna show you on, I think this one's easiest to see. So it's, it's dots, but they're actually like tiny hexagons, I believe. So they're dots, but I mean, I think they're tiny hexagons. I, maybe I'm seeing things. Maybe they're dots, but they're not perfectly circle dots. Let's just say that. Okay, so this is paparazzi. We just loaded it this week, and then um, I will basically, this will get starched, and then I'll use this in my 2024. I'm just gonna move these. And I don't think we have a half yard bundle of that. Another collection we received from Riley Blake this week is called Make. It's by Christy Lee. I'm going to open it and show it to you. It is uh, all of her collections that I can remember have been rainbow based. Um, brights. This one has that same colorway except it's sewing themed. So in the past her collections have been geometrics like circles, dots, stripes, that kind of thing. This one is all um, sewing. So this one says maker. And so I will say um, this does match her previous collections. 
off of the top of my head, I do not remember the name of her previous collections. I think it was called Dream. It just came to me. So this, this is Maker. Wait. Yeah, this is Make. Make. M-A-K-E. Sorry. But her, I believe her previous one is called Dream. Now, I could be wrong. And I was just thinking Maker because it says Maker. But these are cute little sewing machines. And then it has black. So the blacks are similar to the whites. That's the same prints. That's the white. So nice and bright. This is called Heart of a Princess, Camelot Fabrics. Camelot Fabrics is a company based out of Canada, actually. So when we buy their fabric, it's super expensive because we have to get it over the border. So these are different. I'm really bad. I don't know anything about Disney princesses, but this is a combination of the different princesses. So I'm not going to pretend to know them. I'm just going to flip them back and let you see. Um, it's a smaller collection, but it's called Heart of a Princess. And with Camelot, and I think this goes for any store, when you buy it, that's it. You buy it, they don't reprint, you can't get it again. So it's kind of a one and done. I think, is that Nemo? No. Oh, he said it's Le Mermaid. I don't even know. Sorry, I'm really bad. I don't have a clue. I know that's Rapunzel. I do know Rapunzel. I don't know any of these. I don't, um, I don't watch movies. So I, that's why I don't know. I've watched Rapunzel though about 20 times. And I used to like it. So we have this in a back quarter bundle and in yardage. This week we received some pre-cut bundles from Free Spirit of Tim Holtz. So Tim Holtz is a designer that sells like crazy. It actually sells better for us than K-Facet, which is um, crazy to say. We cut bundles in-house that we constantly sell out of. But this is one, it's a mix. It's called a spark pack. So this is a mix of different collections. So if you've bought Eclectic Elements, you might already have these pieces. But it's all very, um, what's that word? The, what's the name of the style? It's called punk, steampunk? No? They're looking at me like they don't know. Okay, so maybe it's not steampunk. I don't know. Don't trust me. I'm not very hip. I don't know. And then we got in the Earth Meets Sky Batiques by Hoffman. So really pretty. Hoffman Batiques are always beautiful. And Batiques are... Um, you can use either side. They're not single-sided. So, because when they're dyed, they're dyed on both sides. So you can use any side you want. And um, I'm going to answer questions in a second. So I don't have very many. So if y'all have a question, throw it in there. Our last new item I'm so excited about. Okay, Jordan, can you scroll in? It's so cute. I actually didn't even know this arrived because I didn't look at the What's New page yesterday. Yesterday I went to Starbucks and I sat there for three or four hours and proved the brand new Quilted Witch book. And I kind of, I try to do that where I don't have any distractions. If I do it at home, I'll get interrupted by my kids. If I'm here, you know, people will ask questions. So I just go and kind of put my headphones on and proof of book. So I didn't look at the What's New page yesterday. And Denise told me this morning this arrived and it's so cute. It's called Busy Bee Thread Cutter. And I wanted you guys to see the cute packaging, but I have no idea how to open it. So I'm just going to do it the way I, I'm just going to guess. I'm sure I should have done it different. I don't know. Oh, here it goes. Hold on. Wait, I got it, I got it, yay! Okay. So it's, it's um, supposed to be where you can put it on your machine. 
So if you, if you look, can we go to the camera shot? So if you look right here, that's a thread cutter. And we sell those, they're called string blades. But now you can put a B instead. Just make sure this is this side up. And then you can cut your thread right here. Now, I haven't tried it yet, but I'm going to take this home and put the little B on my machine. That's going to be so cute. Um, someone asked about my Juki. They asked if I sew on a Juki at home, and I do. I only use, I have three of them. I have two white and one platinum. And the white one, one of my white ones is here and Teresa uses it. One of my white ones is at home in a closet and my silver one or platinum or whatever it is, I use that one at home. Do I carry Riley Blake Batiks? Not yet. Okay, so you're not, okay. This is a great question. I needed to figure out how to reword it. Just trying to, trying to think of how I can explain it better. Okay. Okay, so Maria Elena Blecka asked, you're not backstitching when you fix the seams. Should we not backstitch? Okay, so let's pretend I pulled the seam out here and here, and I need to go back over that seam. I'm not gonna stitch from here to here. I'm gonna stitch from like way out here to way out here. So I cover the previous stitches that are in there, and I guess that technically is kind of a backstitch, but I instead of backstitching, I go over previous stitches because it's more accurate for me. So hopefully I've answered that correctly. Why do I like the quarter inch foot from Primitive Gatherings more than one comes with the Juki? Because the one that comes with the Juki is actually in centimeters. They call it a quarter inch foot, but it's centimeters. It's not accurate. So that's why. Piggy Super Chat, Epic North. Oh, okay, Epic North is in the chat. He is crazy. That is not a Super Chat, Christopher. That is my son, Christopher. I thought you were at basketball. I guess basketball ended. He's probably in the car. Oh my gosh, sorry. That is not a super chat. If you wanna give me a super chat, you actually have to give me money, Christopher. So that's not a real super chat. What the heck can you make out of Fat Aids? Oh, you can make a lot of stuff out of Fat Aids. Um, there are a lot of Fat Aids friendly patterns. I'm looking for a fun, and another thing you can think about, if you have a layer cake pattern, that's a layer cake is 10 by 10. A fat eighth is nine by 20. You could use a layer cake pattern and then you just have like a little bit, as long as you can get that, as long as you don't need a, anything larger than eight and a half or nine inches, you could use a layer cake pattern and just have more left over. I'm looking for a fun pattern using two charm packs. I would go to our shortcut quilt series and maybe search within those videos charm pack and I. I know like um, Camille Ross Kelly, Prairie Grass Patterns, Fig Tree, Coriotor, I know they all have charm pack friendly patterns. Can you create a video where you sew the binding on a full size finished quilt? It's so heavy and cumbersome. I mean, I could eventually do it. I could do it as part of the Sew With Me series at some point. I would probably do a lap size and I would just sew the binding on. No, I wouldn't do the hand part. Okay, so we're gonna give away three Bountiful kits. So that's so exciting. So three of the charity quilts. And what I want you to do to enter to win is comment and just let me know what is your, like if you had only one tip to give another quilter, what would that tip be? because I would love to see what that is. I hope all of you have a great weekend. Remember, next week will be pre-recorded and the week after I will be um, on a plane. Um, so I will see you guys soon, but um, I will miss you. But um, don't worry about me when I'm missing, I'm okay.